Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more in detail around the testing pyramid itself. So as you saw earlier around the amount of time and costs it would take in order to run these automated tests, we're just going to go ahead and repeat that here. The time it takes um, to run a UI test uh, as opposed to either a service or integration test or even a unit test is much, much higher, which makes it a lot more expensive to run. So going through what each of these actually means. So I'm going to start at the UI level, at the very top level here. And this is actually what we would call our acceptance or functional tests. And so what we really, really want out of what a testing pyramid is, is to have a lot fewer of these tests. And that's why it's actually called a pyramid. So at the top, we want fewer end-to-end -end and UI tests running through the features. The reason why we want this is because, uh, as I said earlier, it's very costly and it runs really slow. And because of that, it actually can be quite brittle. Now let me actually delve into why it can be quite brittle. So again, going back to the example of logging in, if I'm running this login end-to-end -end test from front to end, but my database somehow has went down through the process, then that test will actually fail because trying to look up that user in the database, they can't anymore because the database has just gone down. However, that doesn't mean that the services layer or the UI layer is wrong. It just means that something's wrong with the environments themselves, which make these tests a bit more brittle. So now let's go into what the integration tests, or even some people would call service layer tests. So these tests are testing that several components can actually work together. So looking into our example of the login flow, we want to make sure that our database is actually talking to our services layer. And so in the integration test, we may have some sort of tests from the services layer saying, hello, can I actually talk to the database? And if I can talk to the database, that may be one test. And so you're actually just testing if the database is up. The second part would be saying, OK, if I make a, a call to this particular database, I would expect that information to come back as is. And I can actually assert on that test. So that would be uh, another form of an integration test I would potentially run. Contract tests uh, are a different type of integration test and in where we want to actually understand the contracts between two different modules. So let's take the example of the login flow again. And the contract test that I would actually create for this is uh, testing the contract between my mobile application, whether it be Android or iOS, with the API that I'm actually talking to, which in this case is a login service. So in this contract test, I would probably like to uh, create a contract that says, I would like to make a call to the login service, and now I expect a response back, and that would be the actual contract. So the contract itself could actually say, I will hand you a username and a password, and you will hand me back a success or an error message, and that would be the contract. And if for some reason that API changes uh, within the login service, and if it doesn't accept um, a username anymore, but it accepts an, a different identifier and a password, then I would actually see this contract test break before uh, we actually implemented it in production. The bottom of the pyramid is what we would call our unit tests. These are the more low-level tests for isolated logic. And this is actually really, really fast types of tests and also helps with refactoring, which we will be talking about in a later section. But these unit tests are things that are very modular and test only the logic that's within my module itself. So again, when we were talking about the integration test earlier, uh, we were talking about the communication between one module and a different module and making sure that that communication is correct. However, now we want to talk about our unit tests, which may lie within the login service itself. So let's go ahead and uh, take the example again. When I actually have in my login service, I probably have a class uh, in my service that says login. And in this class, I will probably have a series of unit tests within this class that actually test the different functionalities of each uh, permutation that I want my login service to do. So for example, if I log in, uh, I would probably call a method that says login, which takes in probably a username or a password. And then in this method, we'll probably be calling out for, to different services to get the information. 
However, in a unit test, I will be mocking or stubbing out those different services and making sure that the bit of logic that my class is actually doing uh, is actually working as is. So that's where we actually isolate uh, the test within that particular class or particular module.